Hello, everyone. This is Yu Zhang from Intel's virtualization team. And uh, my topic today is unmapped guest memory. Mm. Before I give this presentation, I'd like to say the main ideas are based on works of Kirill Shudmo and Sean Christopherson. So the credit should go to them. Uh, okay, here is the agenda of this session. First, I'd like to talk about the background. For example, why I mapped guest memory is necessary, especially in Intel's TDX architecture. Next, I will summarize the requirement of guest mapping. For example, why is it possible? Um, then we will think about the basic targets of guest mapping. I mean, what do we want to achieve? And in the end, I will describe different design options, which were discussed in the community. Uh, actually, uh, some proposals are still under discussion when I'm recording this video. So, and it's very likely there will be more information when you watch this video, and uh, hopefully we can get some agreement by that time. So <clears throat> about the background, as we all know, mapping guest memory into host user space is a common practice in current QVM. Such design provides convenience for the host to, to perform emulation. For example, KVM needs to access guest memory to work guest page table and to decode the guest instruction. A device model like QMU need to visit guest memory to do the emulation and uh, sometimes uh, guest memory is shared by QMU to vhost users like DBDK and uh, SBDK to perform the DMA operations directly into guest memory. Uh, guest memory that needs to be accessible by the host emulation logic can be considered as shared memory. Otherwise, it, it can be regarded as private. However, uh, since the host has no idea which part of guest memory will function as shared. The most convenient way for KVM is to just map the entire guest memory into its user space, for example, Cumulus virtual address space. Also, coupling with HVA and the GPA in KVM's MEM slots uh, facilitates the GPA to HPA translation. The KVM MMU page port handler can just uh, call get user pages to get a uh, HPA once the HPA of this GPA is identified. Well, with the advent of security features like Intel TDX and AMD SEV, KVM is no longer inside the TCP and the host shall not be able to access guest private memory. Okay, let's take a look at uh, Intel TDX. Intel TDX uses uh, enhanced MPTME engine to enable memory encryption and meanwhile provide memory integrity protection. With this uh, enhanced MPTME engine, um, we can prevent a cipher text analysis from untrusted software. Uh, for example, when the host is trying to read any uh, guest private data with its shared KID, uh, zero the data instead of the encrypted one will be written. Also, it can prevent uh, uh, data modification without detection. That means we need to ensure the guest, uh, TD guest will read back the same data, which was last uh, written to its private memory. So if a uh, host uh, accidentally write to as any guest private pages using the shared KID, a corrupted message authentication code will be generated. And so what is the message authentication code and uh, what will happen if the TD consumes uh, the, some data with corrupted MAC? Okay, message authentication code uh, MAC is a 28-bit integrity check value. Uh, assigned, associated with uh, each cache line in memory. Uh, when the cache line data is written to memory, MKTME engine will encrypt the data with appropriate in encryption key. 
and then it will compute a map value over the cipher text, which will be stored in the ECC memory as metadata. Uh, in addition to the 28-bit MAC, there is a uh, TD owner bit, TD owner bit, which is also used when calculating the MAC value. And it is uh, also stored separately along with the MAC. TD owner bit indicates whether the data belongs to a TD or not. It is set to one if the write operation is using a private PID, otherwise to zero. Later, when the cache line is loaded from memory, MKTM engine will check the TD owner bit first and then verify the MAC value. The cache line will be marked as poisoned if the integrity check fails. And on the subsequent consumption of the poisoned data, uh, there are two possible scenarios. Uh, if the call determines that the execution can continue, it will treat the poison as a version check exception. But if the call uh, determines execution cannot continue, it will do an unbreakable shutdown. Um, for example, uh, the, the CPU may not recover from any uh, from a machine check exception if the consumption of uh, poison data happens in some complex uh, in some complex microcoded instruction, which involves multiple memory accesses. So, in the worst case, incorrect or malicious writes to the TD private memory may lead to system crash. And our solution is to map the private PDs to one specific TD only. And that means we cannot map private pages into multiple guests. Uh, in TDX, uh, it, it can be guaranteed by the same module, also known as TD, Intel TDX module. Uh, also, that means we shall not map any private pages into host user space. Um, after all, if host is not allowed to access the private page, why should we keep this mapping set up? Uh, as mentioned earlier, the need to map our guest memory into a host virtual address space is because uh, binding uh, HPA with a GPA offers convenience for KVM to get a H HPA. But uh, this is only a design choice of KVM. It is not a, a prerequisite for the GPA to HPA translation. Another, another reason is because the host has no idea which part of our guest memory is shared. So as long as KVM can perform the GPA translation, and as long as KVM knows the address of the guest shared buffers, it does not have to map all the guest memory into its user space. So what memory shall be considered as shared, and what memory shall be private? Well, in, in TDX, since the instruction decoding is done inside the TD, there is no need for KVM to work guest page table uh, to fetch any instruction. So these pages, uh, along with the guest normal data pages, shall no longer be accessible to the host. Actually, the shared pages shall be very limited. The ones I can imagine are the PV clock pages, and uh, for example, the guest DMA buffers, such as the uh, software LTLB buffer and the ones allocated by DMA direct allo. So the remaining questions are how to unmap guest memory and meanwhile maintain GPA to HPA translation. Okay, let's take a look at uh, what we want about guest mapping. First, since only guest knows which part of its memory is shared, it is the job of guest to notify host noti to notify host about the shared pages, whether explicitly or implicitly. And by guest, it means both guest kernel and the virtual BIOS. In TDX, it's also called a TDVF. Second, we do not want QVM to manage the host page table directly. The task should belong to the Linux memory management subsystem. 
and uh, if necessary, the memory management uh, subsystem can also choose to unmap guest uh, private memory in its direct mapping. For KVM, it needs to take care of the transitions between sharing and unsharing of a guest bit. Another responsibility of KVM is to maintain the GPA to HPA translation. Uh, and uh, if we want our solution to be also applicable to non TDX environments, uh, KVM or host kernel should also take the responsibility to guarantee that one one association between the guest, page, guest private page and the host physical one. And that, that means uh, HPA shall be only assigned to one specific GPA of one guest at one moment. And of course, support of the normal VMs shall not be impacted. About the design options. For now, there are two design options. The first one is posted by Curio and uh, we call it struct page based uh, guest mapping. In Curio's patch, guest memory is still mapped when the VM is created. And later, the, prote the protection can be provided um, as long as host cannot use uh, HVA to access a physical page. So eventually, the PF information will still be kept in host PTE just with, uh, for example, with the uh, present bit clear. So when host user space tries to access the private page with one HVA, a page fault will be generated and the SIG bus will be sent to the user space. To achieve GPA to HPA translation, uh, new flags of get user pages were introduced so that an uh, uh, HPA can still be written for KVM MAO page fault handler. And this flag shall be used by KVM only. Mm. But for one one association between the GPA and the HPA, uh, we can only rely on the TDX module. I mean, the, the, the cost of adding extra information in struct page uh, or introducing a whole new data structure is actually not uh, affordable. Another disadvantage of this design is lack of support for memory that isn't backed by struct page. Well, uh, to MF guest memory, the structured based solution has two different uh, subversions. The first version leverages uh, an existing flag in structured, the hardware poison flag. In this version, the HVA is unmapped in host page table by KVM with a fake swap entry. And uh, in order not to override existing hardware poison flag, the second version introduces a new struct bit flag, the page guest. So this version also adds uh, some new unprotected flags and the VMA flags, so that a VMA range can be marked as uh, protected. Another improvement in this version is that the host page table is updated by Linux memory management uh, subsystem when answering the and protect the system call. Okay, uh, here is a workflow of the struct bit based solution. Once the memory protection feature is detected by the guest, for example, with the CPU ID, the vCPU can trigger a help call in QVM to mark a GFN range as shared or private. A new exit reason will be used by QVM to forward the hypercall into QNU, which invokes a protected system call into Linux kernel. The Linux memory management uh, subsystem will update the host PTE in the system, system call handler. Later, if an EPT violation happens on the private page, KVM MMU page fault handler will use the new flag, for example, follow guest uh, in get user page so that a PFN can still be generated and be put into the SPTE. 
And the second design proposal is from Sean Christopherson. Uh, in this proposal, uh, the guest private memory is backed by enlightened uh, by an enlightened file descriptor. This file descriptor shall be a dedicated one, meaning it shall not be shareable between multiple processes. And uh, it also shall be private, uh, meaning it cannot be mapped into any user space. Also, uh, some extra flags may be necessary to convert the entire file uh, to private memory and to trunk the, truncate the file, file size. Well, this is a brand new design, uh, which decouples the uh, TDB translation with host page table. Uh, but uh, actually, there was a similar idea proposed by Isaku in KVM Farm two years ago. So maybe we can take a reference from that topic. And uh, about, uh, about the GPA to HPA translation. Sean proposed to introduce a new mem slot for the guest parameter memory, uh, possibly with a whole new address space. And in this uh, mem slot, private operations are needed. For example, operations from the back install are expected to translate uh, GFN to PFN based on the file offset and to get the uh, TDP mapping level. Uh, meanwhile, QVM may need to offer operations to Linux memory management uh, subsystem to support the invalidation and uh, swiping or migration of a uh, GFN range. So compared with the uh, struct bit based solution, uh, this solution has uh, several advantages. First, with uh, FD uh, dedicated to one specific guest, and with no uh, HVA mapping. The one one association between the host physical page and the guest page uh, can be maintained with no dependency on the, on the TDX module. And since the host page table is not populated for the guest private memory, the host will have a small footprint. Uh, also, uh, with no fake swap entry in host PTE, the chance of revealing a private PFN uh, would be lowered. Another advantage is that uh, we do not need to override any existing uh, structured flags or uh, to introduce a new one uh, because uh, this design does not uh, rely on the struct any struct page. So in the future, uh, this solution may be easily ported to support memory that is isn't backed by struct bit. And, and of course, the benefit is not free. The design requires significant changes in TVM. For example, new IO control interfaces may be needed to handle the transition between private to shared for a GFN range. And the shared GFN range could be small and uh, scattered. Also, the new GFN range, uh, the new GFN to PFN translation approach relies on the enabling of back, back install uh, support in Linux. And another impact uh, might be on VFL, which also leverages the get user page to ping guest memory. And if a send device is to be supported, we can imagine some new VFL interfaces are necessary to perform the DMA mapping without uh, any HVA information. For now, the discussions on this FD-based solution is still ongoing in the community. Okay, a short summary of this session. Uh, I mapped guest to memory is not only possible, but also desirable. Enhanced security is uh, can be guaranteed with guest cooperation. And the one-one association of host page and guest one is doable, uh, even inside KVM, but with cost. So uh, if you are interested in this topic, please feel free to join the discussion 
uh, let's make the cost uh, affordable. And uh, in the end, I'd like to say thank you to all the people who have joined, who have been working on this and joined the discussions. Um, and uh, since the discussion is still in progress, uh, some names may be missed here. But uh, anyway, uh, I would like to say thank you all. Also, thank everyone for joining this session. Thank you.